Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago, and today I'm gonna be testing Fort Solis on Steam Deck. Thanks to Fallen Leaf for providing a code of the game. I was interested in checking this out because there is a performance patch, as you can see on the top left corner, and this is an Unreal Engine 5 game, so it was below 30 on the Steam Deck in videos that I saw on the internet, so I wanted to check it out for myself. When it comes to deck compatibility, it says well, in-game text is small, maybe difficult to read, functionality accessible, game's default graphics configuration performs well on Steam Deck. Hmm, we'll see about that. So let's get into it right away. Now we're into the game and the text is actually very small. Default settings are film green on, no thanks. Motion blur, let's keep it on because this is more of a interactive movie to say it in some way. 800p. Ultra performance FSR 3 with frame generation, interesting, that's the default setting. And on the graphics we got everything on low. Okay, so with these settings let's get into the game and see how performance fares. Alright, welcome to the game. As you can see the pixel count is extremely low, we're playing at 800p with ultra performance FSR 3 plus frame generation. And I gotta say, there is a lot of artifacting, especially around the characters, not sure if you can notice that. And there's some jitterness to the image, I'm guessing that's the frame generation, so the first order of business, in my opinion, is to disable frame generation. Yeah, I'm also noticing that my mouse cursor is very choppy. So frame gen, let's get rid of it. Okay, with ultra performance FSR 3 and low settings, there is 30 FPS. Most of our jobs now are repairing weather damage. Okay, that's why they put frame generation there, so it feels like we're playing at 60, but not actually. So okay, technically it's playable because the default settings hit decent performance. But I think this shouldn't be marked as playable, I mean... I know it's a, a more of a cinematic sort of thing with very little interaction. You just move around and press buttons. Basically not an action game like, I don't know, a Call of Duty game that you need Twitch reflexes. But I still think is this ingenuous to co-playable a game that requires ultra performance FSR at uh, 800p? I mean, ultra performance FSR it's very low, especially in a resolution like this. I wouldn't consider this playable. I mean, it's super blocky, blocky as hell, super low resolution. It's not that I cannot see what's going on, I can. But I think it ruins the cinematic experience that the game tries to convey. So let's try something else. Okay, so we're getting upper 20s. Low 30s with this setting. The game looks pretty good, still. The thing that I do not like, again, is the low resolution. Let's try performance FSR instead of ultra performance. Ultra performance is just too low. Even performance FSR is a little too low. Okay, we apply it. And we get 24 FPS. But the game looks way better than with ultra performance, obviously. But honestly, I wouldn't call this playable with the default settings, because the default settings are horrible. I mean, <laughs> we're at the lowest settings, they tell us to use Ultra Performance FSR at 720p. So, I mean, the game has great graphics and everything, but again, the resolution I think is way too low. I would say this is the most demanding UE5 game that i played so far, but it looks gorgeous. So, okay, let's pause the game and try medium settings instead. I know, it's kind of a waste of time, but let's give it a try. So we're getting 30s here, and if we go to medium... Usually from medium to low there's not a huge performance difference, so instead of 30s we get 30s. So it runs almost the same on medium. So medium settings, performance, FSR 3. Runs, let me see, yeah, almost the same as low settings, but visuals are pretty gorgeous, at least in my opinion. Feels more like a walking simulator so far. 
but when I played the game, despite being more of a <laughs> cinematic experience, played at 20 FPS, no. Especially considering that we gotta sacrifice the resolution so much. Again, we're playing a UE5 game on the Steam Deck. They got a performance patch, so I don't even want to imagine how it ran before that patch. <laughs> so let's see how it looks on the smaller screen. Maybe it's more passable at a low resolution. There is quite a few sections where the game drops below 30, as I showed you at the beginning. But in this part, it's actually okay. Again, for guaranteed 30 FPS across the board, Ultra Performance FSR is the way to go. But I'm using Performance FSR 3, just because Ultra Performance is just way too low. It doesn't make any sense to use that unless you're like at 4K. Yeah, at 4K or higher, actually. It's not built to do at 720p. It's just too pixelated. But on the smaller screen, it looks pretty good with performance of SL3. So it's a great looking game. But it's one of the worst running UE5 games I've played so far. Again, it's, it's kind of acceptable just because, well, right now I'm not even driving the vehicle. It's more like playing, um, how to say it, one of those David Cage games. So it kind of makes sense that we... I can kind of tolerate this. But this game is all about the visual fidelity, the story, the cinematography. All that good stuff. So again, while performance isn't... I mean, it's not like we want 60 FPS. We don't need it on this one. Being at the 20s, low 20s pretty often... Is quite unremarkable in my opinion. But hey, it's Unreal Engine 5, kind of to be expected. And we're playing on a Steam Deck, so it's hard to complain. Just don't use Ultra Performance FSR, do yourself a favor. And stay on medium settings, because low, well, it's tempting to use low settings in a situation like this. It runs basically the same as medium. I mean, the prologue is a prologue, super slow, to be expected. We only walked around and pressed a couple buttons. So yeah. Visually, pretty good. Performance, I mean, personally, I would mark it as unsupported. If I was a Valve employee trying to get this verified, I mean, despite the performance patch, that's not enough, but I understand it's UE5. It's not like they can make miracles on the Steam Deck. But at the very beginning, we were already below 30 FPS. And the default settings that the Steam verification say, oh yeah, the default settings run well on Steam Deck. The default settings is FSR3 Ultra Performance, lower settings, and frame generation enabled. Let me, let me show you frame generation now that we're here. My issue with frame gen, despite being an interesting technology, is that the frame times are not good, and the game has lots of artifacts on moving objects. So while well, with frame generation, it's actually a promising frame rate. I mean, just look at the wheels of the vehicle. They are even more pixelated than before. And there is lots of artifacting. And the frame times are not good. Doesn't feel smooth at all. But hey, this is one way to do it. If you don't mind the extra latency plus the jitterness of the controls. They're not super responsive with FSR3 frame gen. But in this game, you don't control it too much. I mean, I'm not even driving this, as I was saying. It's more like an interactive cutscene. So if you still want to play the game despite these shortcomings, performance FSR3 with frame generation and medium settings should be good enough. If this is your only way to experience the game. Again, performance of SR, at least on the smaller screen, looks decent. And visuals are insane. I mean, it's UE5. Let me see. Okay, moving the camera actually isn't so bad. Yeah. Despite the frame times looking super spiky, 
it's actually pretty decent. The thing is the, the artifacts you get when moving the camera. If you can see the top and bottom portions of the screen, there's like some artifacting going on also at the sides. So it's not a perfect FSR 3 implementation. And also we have a very inconsistent frame rate. That's why there's artifacts. So yeah, would I recommend this game on Steam Deck? I mean, not really. <laughs> the, the frame rate is just not good enough. And the sacrifices you need to do to resolution in order to get this at 30 FPS are just way too high. FSR 3 frame gen is welcome. But we don't have a good enough frame rate to get good use of it. So my advice is medium settings, 800p, FSR3 performance, no frame generation. And there will be many moments below 30 FPS, but some moments will be at 30 and the game will look much better than with frame generation. So yeah. If you don't mind those slow interactions and drops into a 20s in certain parts, it should be good. But as you can see, it's not 100% at 30 FPS. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, thanks to the publisher for providing a code of the game. I'm going to now test this on the Rogue Ally, should be interesting. But just avoid ultra performance FSR. Makes no sense. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.